in the Lebanon. Um, and uh, undoubtedly a Roman temple here, uh, Temple of Jupiter that I'm sitting in and, and, and behind it, the, uh, the Temple of Bacchus dedicated to wine. Those Romans knew how to have fun. Um, a Roman site for sure, but what about this bizarre enclosure wall that surrounds it, which is totally separate from the temple of Jupiter? What's this about? These, this is called the Trilithon. Each of these three blocks weighs 900 tons, 900 tons. And it's extraordinary the way they're built into a wall and raised 30 feet above the ground like this, a wall, the provenance for which has not been established by archaeology. Just another look, and I'm in the picture for, for scale at the, at the Trilithon. So uh, nearby is the quarry. And the quarry contains a number of very large blocks that were never transported from the quarry site. Now, the one I'm standing on weighs a thousand tons, hundred tons more than the ones in that wall. And that one over there on the other side of the road, unfortunately used now as a rubbish tip, weighs 1,200 tons. And the one here in the, that I'm standing on here, which is only recently excavated, turns out to weigh 1,400 tons. Why only recently excavated? Because the whole site was covered in sedimentation. Um, what archaeologists say, and it still amuses me, of course the Romans did everything. They found they could move 900 ton blocks, but 1,000 tons was too much for them. So they couldn't move them. So they just left them in the quarry. From the intensity of the pitch. Oh my God. In my view, that's a very un-Roman thing to do. The Romans were very practical people. Okay, let's say they couldn't move a thousand tons, but having gone to all the work of creating huge megaliths like this, they wouldn't have wasted them. They'd have sliced them up like loaves of bread and used the already shaped blocks in other constructions. The fact that they didn't do that, that these are still there, suggests to me the whole site was covered during Roman times. And it's only in more recent times that it's been excavated and revealed. And then let's go to Sacsayhuaman uh, in the Sacred Valley near the town of Cusco uh, in Peru, in the high Andes. Incredible megaliths there, which archaeology gives entirely to the Incas, even though the Incas themselves recognized and honored the work of predecessors. It gives, archaeology gives this work entirely to the Incas. I mean, that's me for scale standing beside that block. And look at these weird sort of holes in the block and the way the blocks are almost fitted, melted together in a very strange manner. It's very different from what is definitely Inca architecture. Uh, I'll just show a few more shots. These, these sort of scallops in the side of the block and these holes, it almost looks like the stone was soft and that people were pressing something into it. Maybe it raises the question, was, was, was there a way of manipulating and, and even melting stone, putting it in place? Um, the work is very fine. I mean, you can't get a razor blade between the joints in the blocks. It's just incredibly fine megalithic work. Um, and I was privileged to spend, I've had several visits to the Andes with Jesus Gamara, who himself is a descendant of the Incas and who is a local researcher following in the footsteps of his father, uh, who also was intensely interested in the megaliths. And he and his father, are both confident, absolutely confident, that uh, the Incas simply were latecomers and that they rebuilt, they built on top of, they modified, they honored by overbuilding the much older structures that are the megalithic structures. And here we are at Pizac and Jesus is showing me different aspects of the site and at Sacsayhuaman and explaining his view that actually there's evidence for three cultures there, the Incas being the last, and that there were two earlier cultures uh, and he believes that the megalithic work is entirely the work of these earlier cultures and has been wrongly handed to his ancestors, the Incas. Uh, and weirdly, up there near Cusco, we have this curious 
stonework and we also have it at Alakahoyuk in Turkey. Exactly the same kind of thing. Is this a coincidence or is there something going on behind the scenes of history that we've not been fully informed about yet? Um, and, and, and oddly, these, these patterns, these T-shaped pillars that we see at Gobekli Tepe are repeated at the Temple of Edfu in Upper Egypt and uh, also in Peru. Let's go to Tiwanaku, even higher in the Andes. We're now 14,000 feet above sea level. And this 300-ton block, God knows how anybody got it up there at 14,000 feet above sea. I can even breathe at 14,000 feet above sea level. It takes me days to get acclimatized. Um, there's this massive megalithic site uh, in, in Tiwanaku. Uh, and some curiosities. There's, there's these H-shaped blocks. We, would, we recognize them as an a, a H because H is a letter in our, our, our alphabet. That's, of course, not what they meant to the ancients. But it's the shape I want to draw attention to because that same shape appears at Gobekli Tepe. It appears uh, on the belts of some of the figures. Now, I'm not saying that people from Gobekli Tepe brought that idea to the Americas. I suspect it more likely the other way around, actually. Um, but uh, wh what I'm saying is that there appears to be an iconographic connection between the two sites, which is not explained by current theories of archeology. span Tiwanaku, uh, is a very controversial site, and archaeologists would like it not to be much more than 2,000 years old. But there's curious astronomical alignments at Tiwanaku, uh, which make it clear that the site was aligned to the summer solstice in 10,500 BC, 12,500 years ago. Uh, and this is because the rising point of the sun on the solstice changes as a result of shifts in the obliquity of the Earth's axis. Uh, over a 41,000 year cycle. Tiwanaku makes much more sense as 12,500 years old from an astronomical point of view than it does as 2,000 years old. Some other figures here. The ones on the right, starting here, are, are all from Tiwanaku. Uh, but over here we have the god Osiris from Egypt, a bearded figure remembered by the ancient Egyptians as a bringer of the gifts of civilization, not only in Egypt, but in many other lands as well. And down here, we have the earliest surviving representation of the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, in Mexico, uh, from the Olmec culture. Uh, and again, Quetzalcoatl is remembered in traditions from Central America as a bringer of civilization and, and as a teacher of civilization. So let's move over now to Tiwanaku. There's this pillar in the so-called semi-subterranean chamber. And on the front of the pillar is this face, which is the face of a deity venerated in the Andes for millennia. And the name of that deity is Viracocha. Uh, notice the, the heavy beard uh, on the figure here and here. There's a serpent on the side of the pillar. And up here, you can't see it clearly as a curious animal. Uh, we've highlighted it here this curious creature. And what it looks like is an extinct example of South American megafauna. It looks a lot like Toxodon, which went extinct at the end of the Ice Age. What's it doing on this pillar if the site is only 2,000 years old? Then there's another problem. OK, I suggest strongly that evidence from much earlier megalithic construction is hiding in plain view and has been misdated by archaeology. But there's a far greater problem that's posed by the huge areas of the Earth where only minimal archaeological investigations have ever been carried out. Well, the Sahara Desert, for example. Yes, there's been some archaeology in the Sahara Desert, but not very much. I get it. It's a very expensive place to work. It's a very tough place to work. And besides, archaeology has the deep that there's not much to find there. There has been some archaeology done, but very, very little, minimal. That's 9.2 million square kilometers of the Earth's surface that hasn't yet really been studied by archaeology at all. It's around yeah, you. the size yeah, of the you. of China. It's like, it's like talking about the world and excluding China completely from the story. 
We can't say we've got the past completely nailed down when we haven't thoroughly investigated the Sahara Desert because the Sahara Desert was green during the Ice Age. It wasn't how it looks today. It was a fertile area for many periods during the Ice Age. And oddly enough, there are ancient maps copied from even older source maps which show river channels in the Sahara and lakes. And weirdly, recent surveys have demonstrated that there was a river channel exactly where indicated on that mysterious ancient map. Here's Antarctica as it looks today. Um, well, this map was drawn in 1813. It's the Pinkerton world map. Um, and it's based on the latest science available in 1813. It's a really good map where it comes to South America and South Africa and Australia. But as you will observe, something's missing from the picture. Antarctica isn't there. Why isn't Antarctica there? Because it's an honest map. They hadn't discovered it in 1813. They didn't discover it until 1820. So it's very odd in my view that Antarctica appears on much older source ma maps, which themselves are based on even older source maps. Um, and and um, it's interesting, this, this little legend down here, I've had it translated. Uh, Behold clearly to you, O reader, Orontius Phineas Delfinates offers with elegant appearance a geography not so far seen and accurately engraved, which in fact preserves the shape and form of the human heart. And take care that it should be at heart for you. And also presents to your eye provinces, islands, seas, rivers, mountains, not so far seen nor known, to some of the great map papers of, of, of antiquity, Ptolemy, Eudoxius, Aristophanes, Macrobius. And we're told that these areas lay in darkness until this map was drawn. I suggest they lay in darkness because they were on the much older source maps that Orontius Phineas and other map makers drew upon, source maps that came out into public circulation uh, from about the 1400s, 1300s onwards, probably taken from Constantinople. And then what about, what about the area of the world that was covered by rising sea levels at the end of the Ice Age? This is another area where very little archaeology has been done. We are talking about 27 million square kilometers. That's roughly equivalent in size to China, the US, and Europe, all added together that were above water during the Ice Age and that were submerged at the end of the Ice Age. Um, again, I'll come to those ancient maps. On the left, we have Southeast Asia in 1507, and as it looks today. And on the right, we have an inundation map showing Southeast Asia and Australia as they looked 21,300 years ago when sea level was 400 feet lower than they are today. As you can see, what today is an archipelago of islands and the Malaysian Peninsula was a huge subcontinent-sized landmass. New Guinea was joined to Australia at that time. And it's interesting that this other mysterious map, again drawn from older source maps, seems to depict the Sunda shelf as it looked during the last ice age. Um, so this map is showing present land masses and the sunken land masses that were submerged at the end of the ice age. Who's that? Who's that? This is my walkie. Cancer. It's different in a child because your child's still growing. I had 14 rounds of chemo. There's thousands and thousands of kids all over the world who need help. This is my first time having kids. The Sunda shelf is particularly interesting. We now know that it was highly fertile, highly attractive land during the Ice Age. So you didn't really want to spend a lot of time in the far northern hemisphere during the Ice Age. You wanted to get down near the equator. That was the best, warmest land on Earth. Um, and this would have been a fantastic place for people to settle and for civilizations to evolve. And that's why I'm so interested, and we depicted it in Ancient Apocalypse, this, this work by geologist Danny Hillman Natwajaja uh, at um, Gunung Padang on the island of Java. Uh, and I'm suggesting, and Jun Danny believes, that this site is originated more than 20,000 years ago. It may have been added to by later cultures. It's still venerated today but it's a very, very old site in his view. It was one of those high areas that was above water, uh, that, that remained above water, even after sea level rose at the end of the Ice Age. 
uh, and and uh, it's on the island of Java, but that island of Java was connected to Sumatra and Borneo and the Malaysian Peninsula when the Sunda Shelf was above water. So, um, Sahara Desert, nine million square kilometers, 27 million square kilometers submerged at the end of the Ice Age, the best real estate on Earth. Is marine archaeology being done? Yes, it is. Marine archaeology is being done. It does exist. It's very expensive, and not a lot of it is done. But when I saw this headline, I thought, I've got somebody on my side. Archaeologist explains why we need to look underwater to understand the past. But then the explanation is so disappointing, because what he's looking for is shipwrecks from the 16 and 1700s. And that's primarily what all marine archaeology is about. It's changing now. It's changing slowly. We, we know about um, Dogger Land as a result, and archaeologists are beginning to look at, at it. But my point is that the vast area that was submerged during the end of the Ice Age has never been studied by archaeology at all. And they're not in a position to say that they know that there's no possibility of a lost civilization during the Ice Age, while they haven't investigated those 27 million when they haven't investigated the Sahara Desert. Well, Santa and I decided to do some investigation of our own underwater. Uh, and actually, we spent the best part of um, 10 years uh, scuba diving all over the world, following up tales and traditions from local divers and fishermen uh, looking for structures underwater. And here at Ponape, uh, the, 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 the well-known site of Nan Madol, um, we followed up the advice of local divers, and we went underwater. And we find that the site doesn't just stop there. It continues underwater, and at first it continues with the same kind of construction that you see above water. But as you go deeper, as you get down to about 27 meters underwater, you start seeing stretches that are completely different, these huge pillars uh, underwater. Um, and... Uh, a fallen pillar here, which is very interesting because it so closely resembles the um, pillars of Tinian uh, in a nearby area of the Pacific. Um, Micronesia, and th this is Tinian, and I'm suggesting again that that pillar underwater suggests to us that Tinian megalith may be much older than we're told. That's my fins disappearing through a tunnel underwater in Japan. Um, and uh, Santa and I did more than 200 dives around this site. It's called Yonaguni. And I'm going to show you why I believe archaeologists are wrong. Archaeologists who've never dived there, who wouldn't even contemplate diving there. Diving at Yonaguni is really dangerous. There's a massive current there. You get swept away. If you try and stop and examine the structure, you end up fighting the sea. And believe me, you don't want to fight the sea. When the sea sends a current your way, the best thing you can do is just go with it and drift, and that's great fun. But you try to hang on to a structure, and the sea's going to beat you up badly. Um, well, that's the edges of that tunnel. And as you can see, it's a megalithic tunnel with one block piled on top of the other. And then at the end of the tunnel, we see, we see this. Two blocks positioned side by side. And that's me just diving down beside those blocks to show their nature and their scale. They're enormous. Uh, and archaeologists say, oh, no problem. Uh, they must have fallen from some cliff overhead. The only problem is there is no cliff overhead and never has been. So those two blocks, this is them in context. There they are. That tunnel that I went through is down here. There's the two blocks. And then there's this massive, completely natural uh, stone outcropping. I'm not disputing that it's natural. But as we continue to explore that outcropping, what do we find? We find a flat terrace, and we find steps on the terrace. And in my mind, this speaks strongly of human workmanship. Japan is a megalithic culture. Many of the megaliths in Japan have never really been properly studied. This one is called Masado no Iwafuna, the upside down boat stone um, in uh, the Asuka area of Japan. Um, and uh, it's interesting that if you go around to the other side of that huge megalith, you'll see how it was created. They, they um, cut out these grooves in it, creating these outcroppings, which if they'd finished the work would have been smoothed off and left 
and left to look like the rest of the structure. Oddly enough, exactly the same stone cutting technique is found underwater at Yonaguni. And since it's nearly 30 meters underwater, it's been underwater for more than 12,000 years. Um, above water in Japan, you do have megalithic stone circles. The one at the top left is from Hokkaido. Uh, Aomori on the right, very small river stones used to create a circle. Uh, and then Shikoku down at the bottom left. Well, we heard of a site in the Kerama Islands, in the southern part of Japan, where there was a stone circle underwater. Well, we couldn't resist that. So we went diving there. And uh, lo and behold, what did we find? A massive stone circle. Uh, and indeed, circles made of small river stones as well, but 30 meters underwater, 12,000 years old plus. What is going on here? Well, that's me with a video camera up there and a diver down there beside the central upright, upright for scale. These megaliths, like the pillars at Karahan Tepe, are carved out of bedrock. They're carved out of bedrock. Um, and it's really difficult for me to see how nature could have done this. Uh, I mean, there I am on top of the central upright. Look at the way the outer curve of the central upright matches the inner curve of one of the outer uprights. Here we are now in Taiwan. From the island of Yonaguni, Taiwan is actually visible on a clear day. Here we're underwater with local diver Steve Shea at Taiwan, and he's showing us a wall he discovered underwater, about 20 meters underwater. Uh, and that wall has battlements, um, and it has a kind of plaza in front of it. And unless there's any doubt that it's man-made, let's get up close and look at it. It's made of individual blocks of stone. This doesn't happen naturally. This is a man-made structure underwater, which archaeology has paid absolutely zero attention to. And then what about India? Diving in, in Indian waters is often quite murky. There's a lot of sediment in the water. It makes it very difficult to see. But here's South India as it looked during the Ice Age when sea level was, was much lower. Sri Lanka was joined to South India. Um, and I'm interested in two sites in particular in South India, Pumpahar and Mahabalipuram. Pumpahar we heard about from the National Oceanographic Institute of India. We're based in Goa. And they kindly actually took us diving at Pumpahar and showed us what they are confident is a man-made structure. They describe it as a U-shaped structure at 29 meters underwater. And I apologize for the visibility, but that's what you dive in there. Um, and uh, fishermen get their nets caught on it, causes trouble to fishermen all the time. In fact, they would like it removed. Uh, and there are individual blocks surrounding it. Further north at, at Mahabalapuram, um, Pusantha and I, who investigated this area first. Uh, Santha speaks the Tamil language as her first language. Um, and so we were able to communicate easily and fluently with local fishermen. And we asked them at Mahabalipuram, is there anything underwater that you guys know about? And they said, yeah, there's a whole city out there. And we're really annoyed about it because we keep catching our nets on it and we have to send down divers and they're not scuba divers, free divers. And, and sometimes they get killed. And we've asked the government to do something about it, but they, they don't believe us. Well, we believe them. It took about two years to organize the expedition. And it, we had to involve the Scientific Exploration Society led by John Blashford Snell uh, in Britain. As you can see, it was a very high-tech expedition. Um, and off we went, <laughs> diving off the waters of Mahabalapuram. And immediately, we saw the fishermen were right, that there are man-made structures underwater, two blocks side by side here. Uh, a bit of a wall sticking above the sand, a wall with a standout feature. There I'm putting my dive knife into the gap between two blocks. Um, another pair of blocks there and a curved, a curved feature. There's so much, there's so much more uh, underwater at Mahabalipuram. Well, following that investigation, uh, it was decided that some archaeology would be done. But to my frustration, the archaeology so far has been confined to the intertidal zone, just down to five meters. And they haven't been down to 27 to 30 meters where we found these structures yet. Oreo fans are cooler than ever. For the real fans, Oreo Mint Frozen Treats.
Why do dermatologists worldwide recommend La Roche-Posay? Effective skincare like La Roche-Posay Double Repair Face Moisturizer delivers double action to help repair skin's barrier and provide 48-hour hydration for healthy-looking skin. La Roche-Posay. I'm in the center of this massive body of water, the Pacific Ocean. Something incredible happened here about 800 years ago. In a seemingly unbelievable coincidence, Two archaeological wonders just appeared in the Pacific. One. This is Baalbek uh, in the Lebanon, um, and uh, undoubtedly a Roman. And left to look like the rest of the structure. Oddly enough, exactly the same stone cutting technique is found underwater at Yonaguni. And since it's nearly 30 meters underwater, it's been underwater for more than 12,000 years. Um, Above water in Japan, you do have megalithic stone circles. The one at the top left is from Hokkaido. Uh, Aomori on the right, very small river stones used to create a circle. Uh, and then Shikoku down at the bottom left. Well, we heard of a site in the Kerama Islands, in the southern part of Japan, where there was a stone circle underwater. Well, we couldn't resist that. So we went diving there. And uh, lo and behold, what did we find? A massive stone circle. Uh, and indeed, circles made of small river stones as well, but 30 meters underwater, 12,000 years old plus. What is going on here? Well, that's me with a video camera up there and a diver down there beside the central upright, upright for scale. These megaliths, like the pillars at Karahan Tepe, are carved out of bedrock. They're carved out of bedrock. Um, and it's really difficult for me to see how nature could have done this. Uh, I mean, there I am on top of the central upright. Look at the way the outer curve of the central upright matches the inner curve of one of the outer uprights. Here we are now in Taiwan. From that island of Yonaguni, Taiwan is actually visible on a clear day. Here we're underwater with local diver Steve Shear at Taiwan, and he's showing us a wall he discovered underwater, about 20 meters underwater. Uh, and that wall has battlements, um, and it has a kind of plaza in front of it. And unless there's any doubt that it's man-made, let's get up close and look at it. It's made of individual blocks of stone. This doesn't happen naturally. This is a man-made structure underwater, which archaeology has paid absolutely zero attention to. And then what about India? Diving in, in Indian waters is often quite murky. There's a lot of sediment in the water. It makes it very difficult to see. But here's South India as it looked during the Ice Age when sea level was, was much lower. Sri Lanka was joined to South India. Um, and I'm interested in two sites in particular in South India, Pumpahar and Mahabalipuram. Pumpahar we heard about from the National Oceanographic Institute of India. We're based in Goa. And they kindly actually took us diving at Pumpahar and showed us what they are confident is a man-made structure. They describe it as a U-shaped structure at 29 meters underwater. And I apologize for the visibility, but that's what you dive in there. Um, and uh, fishermen get their nets caught on it, causes trouble to fishermen all the time. In fact, they would like it removed. Uh, and there are individual blocks surrounding it. Further north at, at Mahabalapuram, um, Busantha and I, who investigated this area first. Uh, Santha speaks the Tamil language as her first language. Um, and so we were able to communicate easily and fluently with local fishermen. And we asked them at Mahabalipuram, is there anything underwater that you guys know about? And they said, yeah, there's a whole city out there. And we're really annoyed about it because we keep catching our nets on it and we have to send down divers and they're not scuba divers, free divers. And, and sometimes they get killed. And we've asked the government to do something about it, but they, they don't believe us. Well, we believe them. It took about two years to organize the expedition. And it, we had to involve the Scientific Exploration Society led by John Blashford Snell uh, in Britain. As you can see, it was a very high-tech expedition. Um, and off we went, diving off the waters of Mahabalapuram. And immediately, we saw the fishermen were right, that there are man-made structures underwater, two blocks side by side here. Uh, a bit of a wall sticking above the sand, a wall with a standout feature. There I'm putting my dive knife into the gap between two blocks. Um, another pair of blocks there and a curved, a curved feature. There's so much, there's so much more. 
uh, underwater at Mahabalipuram. Well, following that investigation, uh, it was decided that some archaeology would be done. But to my frustration, the archaeology so far has been confined to the intertidal zone, just down to five meters. And they haven't been down to 27 to 30 meters where we found these structures yet. Welcome to the Jehovah Chronicles with your host, Cosmon Cow. That's right. That's right. Right back like I left something. Mr. Hostess with the mostest. Burning like toast is. Your naga, your nerve. Fresh off of the curve. Jelly jam and preserve. Cosmo and Cal right back up in this thing, y'all, man. Stepping back in from Ethereum. We got another hot lesson. As you seen, we was on the me megalithic building. Shout out to uh, Graham Hancock. You know, one of the people who are uh, out here actually um, pushing back against the the uh so-called scientific consensus and um which are which are really just theories being pushed by the system now today you see we was talking about the megalithic buildings and they always talk about this megalithic builder race well today we're gonna get into the who of this mega me, megalithic builder race and as we've always as we already seen these structures are all across the world but we gonna go without further ado and jump right into the lesson and this is called the copper color megalithic builder race and notice who we got up here that should be interesting off top. Look who we got up here. The so-called Olmec. Okay. Huh? All right. For many of us who have been fortunate enough to travel the world, we have been astounded by the grandeur, beauty, and sheer size of this world's megalithic structures. Two questions seems, seems to forever linger in the mind of any person who has witnessed these magnificent edifices. And that is, who could have possibly built this and how? And in this lesson, we will be answering those questions specifically and shedding light on the great megalithic builder race. This is from the Book of Safa. Let me see if we can blow this up just a little bit. One second. All right, this is this is from the book of Safa. The flesh of the fruit hath perished. The seed still liveth. My seed is in languages, in words, in rocks, and in ruined walls, in fallen temples, and buried cities. These remnants shall speak their parting words. Hear ye these, my sons and daughters, O ye that search for the light of the ages past, but find not. I and the book of the past, of things 
that are past. So the creator says, look for me. My language is in the words, is in languages, in words, in rocks, in ruined walls. And in the and these are ways to go about to prove anything objectively, right? So when we when we take this into account and we look for the megalithic builders, right? And we and we see these remnants of these great structures all over the world, we must now look into them and then compare them to the information we have now in the new information being brought forth in this era and time, right? When we finally let the rocks speak, they speak loudly of culture, where a race of ancient men used the style and technology of building structure, structures that still baffles men today. Since the beginning of recorded history, We've been tantalized with stories of a hidden master race of builders proven by the megalithic structures long abandoned and empty all across the world. Stories of master builders, large and small, spread across the entire world, which has left man to theorize that there had been a race of master builders that dominated the ancient world in times past. Well, the all comprehensive light of a wasp has brought us new information, jewels to be used when deciphering the ancient world of the master builder race. Owaspi states in the book of OSP, uh 2 and 18, in the past, have I not said all things shall be revealed? I quicken the righteous with my own hand, and they will comprehend without belief or without subjectivity, without emotion, hmm? that we will, we will comprehend without belief means we will be objective. A realist. Look what it say. The time of preaching and believing is at an end. Man shall know by his own knowledge and practice that which he knows. In this, in doing that, my light is being manifested in this day. And guess what? Even Bible agrees. Luke 8 and 17, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come to light. And a portion of that light revealed in Owaspi is the who, what, when, where, and why of the ancient megalithic builder race, which called themselves Ahuan. Ahuan. Y'all see this word here? Ahuan. If this is your very first time hearing this word, hit your boy with a one in the chat real quick. Shout out to the creator gang, man. Peace to all the righteous gods, man. Thanks for everybody for coming through, man. Showing your boy Cosmos some love. Thumb up the video, man. And um, sub, like, share, man. Uh, share it on your platforms, man. Let's get this thing cracking. You know what I mean? Let's get it cracking. Right? If this is your very first time hearing the word Ahuan, right? Hit your boy with a one in the chat. All right? So we're finding we we're finding out that Owasp is revealing that the megalithic builder race called themselves. This is what they called themselves, Ahuan. Right? Who are the Ahuans? They are the copper-colored race. Owasp. This is um first book of the Lords, three and twenty-four. And it says, and a new tribe began upon the earth and they were called Ahuans because they were half breeds between the Drucks and the Ions. And the Ions were red, like the Ahuans were red like copper. Hmm? And they were taller and stronger than any other people in the world. 
And the Lord commanded the Ahuan, saying, protect the Ains, the little people, white and yellow, right? Don't get all bent out of shape. I know your cognitive dissonance is kicking in. Oh, Cosmon, these are white people. Are they? Let's see what it got to go on and say. Right? Look what it's telling the Ahuans to do. These large copper colored people. Red like copper. Remember, I kept it just to the Americas. Right? They were taller and stronger than any other people in the world. And the Lord commanded the Ahuan saying, protect the Ains. This is your mound builder stock, right? Your Ain, the little people, white and yellow. Call them the sacred people for you are of them. So the Ahuans, these large copper colored people, right? The megalithic builders come from a little people that they were told to protect right but what is a drug a drug is any type of man now mind you we must take into time or take into account when this is happening for in fact neither ions nor drugs nor ahuans for that fact pure ahuans None of them exist anymore. They're all extinct. You know what I mean? But we have the descendants and the remnants of these people on the earth today. And I happen to be one. You dig what I'm talking about? Of today we would be called Anguigan, right? Or the Iron Leaning Gan. You dig what I'm saying? That's what we call. Or we would be misnomered as American Indian. That's what that's what the term would equate to. But here is your drug, right? It was talking about that brown man that they mix with. But here is your white and yellow. And that's not no CGI. White skinned and white hair also. Look what a waspy say. Remember that two and four right here, right? 204 after that white and yellow. Right. Let's go down and see what 204 got to say again. Right. That when they talk about white and yellow, this is a generalization. See where reference is made as above to white people. It does not mean what we call today white people, but white in fact. But white, in fact, with white hair also. I like to throw the visuals in there for something in real time to help the mind try to actually work through what's going on. You right? Check this out. These are your ancient Persians, right? Watch this. Ancient Persians. Okay. This is the book of the wars. 12, I mean, 21 and 1. Thus lay the three great countries, Arabinia, the Middle East and Africa, Persia, from uh, the Zagros Mountains to the Himalayas, uh, and Hellas, Turkey, and Southern Europe, in Europe, of which Persia, right? This is, so this is the Stanic states. This is your Iran, this is your Pakistan, this is your Afghanistan, this is your Uzbekistan. This is the Middle East and Africa. And this is what we call commonly called Greece in Europe, Hellas, right? where all your Hellenic dynasties come from, right? Of which, right, out of the three, Persia was the mightiest. People with what? Very giants. So out of this out of this thing, Owaspi is revealing that the people of ancient Persia, and we're going to find out 
what Persia means. Persia means Negro. It means Shem. Right? Out of this straight Persian stock come people like Abraham, Moses, Yeshua. You dig what I'm saying? Out of this quote unquote Persian Shemitic stock. Right? But out of this stock, right? Persia was the mightiest of these people groups, people with buried giants, lofty bearing men who were red copper colored, lofty bearing men, red copper colored, with an abundance of long black hair high in the nose and the cheekbone with determined jaws and eyes to charm and command. Mostly what? Full-blooded Ahuin, the large negroidal copper-colored race. Right? Look what we see here on the ancient murals in ancient Persia. Right? With determined jaws and eyes to charm and command, mostly full-blooded Ahuans have breeds between the irons and the burrows in the ground, the brown people. But don't get it twisted. All of them didn't look like this. Just like all people who lived in caves didn't look like this. But when they're talking about people in the ground, they're talking about uh barrier uh people uh buried in the ground they're talking about people like cro magnet people like like neanderthal people like denisovans who lived in caves who actually dug in the ground and lived in the ground even like your modern day afri right who dig holes in the ground right now this is an ancient map remember they said arabinia persian helles this is an ancient map right here. Here's Arabinia, Africa in the Middle East. Here is Hellas. Right? And right in here, in between the Himalayas and the, Zag the Zagros Mountains is right here. Unless becomes all this, Europa and all that. But right here, from the Zagros, from the Zagros Mountains, right here, all the way over here to the Himalayas, right? All this middle ground where you get your Iran over here, your Pakistan, Uzbekistan, all your stands. Kazakhstan, everything in here is where your eight, your quote unquote Asiatic black man comes from. Remember, it's a black race over there that is not produced by hand, right? Where do they come from? They are the Persians, and they also go on to produce a people who move to the land called Canaan or 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 the Le or the Levant, right? A Persian people who spoke a mixed language called Phoenician who migrated to Canaan and dominated the area, right? They weren't even African yet, but they were brown people because they come out of the ancient Persian stock, your quote unquote uh, uh, Asiatic black man. Your Shemitic man, not Semite, Shemite. And by the way, I T E on the end of your name denotes Negroido and Israelite. This is how you denote your Persian. The I T E on the end of your name, Israelite, Ishmaelite, all that. The ITE denotes Persian heritage. Let that sink in. All them ites got killed in the... So the Hivite, 
Hmm? The Jebusite would have been getting killed by their own cousins, the Israelites, when they went in a uh, slaughter Canaan, correct? This is why you got to watch the gods. The gods is tricky. Right? Now, nestled in between the three great lands of Japheth, right? Shem, which is India. Well, ancient Shem is really India all the way to Australia and all the way up here to damn near Turkey. To the Zagros, all this. Ain't, all this that would be hell ass, right? Turns into Persia and Europa would be modern day Hellenic. Right? But now nestled in between the three great lands right here, remember three great lands, there's Africa right here, there's India right here, and there's Japheth right here, or Russia and China, what's in the middle? What's in between them three great lands? Mind you, everywhere a continent touch, what happens? A mountain range is created, right? Right here, what's right here? What's right here on this border right here? The Hindu Kush Mountains, what's right here? Okay, right where these, right where these continents is touching. What's right here? The Himalayas. What's right here? Right. This is how you know the Middle East is part of Africa too, and they on the same continental shelf. Right here is a massive mountain range. Right. Called the Zagros. And the land in between the Zagros, the Hindu Kush, right? The Himalayas and way up here, up here is the Altai. Altai, way up here. Altai Mountain. So all this middle land, this is what they're talking about. Now nestled in between the three great countries, Japheth, Shem, and Ham, was located the chief place of the large copper-colored Negroidal people, the Ahuans. The megalithic builder race. And here they founded a new nation. And the Lord called them Persia, signifying what? Warrior faithis. Mm. Because he created them as a shield to, to guard his chosen, the Ions, right? Now, look, these are some of that Persian ancient giant stock still on the earth in the 1918s. These are the Kashmir giants. Right? Just to give you a visual of who we talking about. This is nothing far-fetched, nothing that can't be objectively proven, even in our time. Right? Just to give you a visual. Take a look at the phenotype. All right? So, the Ahuans were also known as warrior faithists. To many, that can seem a contradiction, being a warrior and a faithist. But remember, that everything and hence everyone has its reason and season. Recall that our creator said, protect the ions, the little people. And also he says, because he created them as a shield to guard his chosen, the ions, right? And many will justifiably push back against the idea of a faithist killing anything that breathes. And I understand. But what many have failed to take into account is the most impactful part of any living, breathing entity on this planet. It's environment. You must take into account the great antiquity we're speaking of 
and what type of people and animals were on the earth at that time. Let's take a look at the Ahuan in the Americas, right? This is from the first book of God, right? And it says, I do not blame you, O I, right? These is, this would be our mother race, the I, our father race. It, when I'm talking, and when I say us, I'm talking about Aboriginal stocks of people in America. We, we come from two people, a megalithic builder and a mound builder stock. One is called Ayan, the other one is called Ahuan. When you mix them together, you get an iron leaning Ahuan called an Angui, right? The Angui is today misnomered as a Negro, but is the Aboriginal. Aboriginal meaning descendant from the originals. The originals are iron and Ahuan, mound builder and megalithic builder. These are the forefathers of the copper colored people in America, and they just so happen to be copper colored too. I do not blame you, O iron, O mound builder. I saw the darkness, saw your straits, but you but you shall never again dwell with the drugs, the people who don't get it, right? Nor with the who? The new red born. Those with faces like new copper. Call them what? Ahua, right? So we see right here that the large megalithic copper colored people in the Americas are called Ahua, if you if you if 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 we just prove that right here, right, that the large copper color red copper brown man of America, right, is called Ahua. Hit me with a two in the chat. If you see that, that the that the large copper color man, right, in America. It's called Ahua. If you see that right here, right here, if you see that, hit me with a two in the chat. Call them Ahua. Why? For they shall be protectors over my chosen, the Ions, forever. Right? And, and every one of our Aboriginal stories, by the way, every one of us got stories of uh, basically giants intermarrying with little people. There, ain't, there is not one tribe. It don't matter if even the, even the Native Americans have these stories because we told them they stories. This is why they're anthropomorphized because at the time when we was telling them the stories, they didn't have a written language. They couldn't read and write yet. This is why the stories are anthropomorphized. We, if you look at it, the Algonquin stories are about men, women. E even the gods are men and women, right? Even like forces of nature are represented as men and women. It's not like that in the Native American tales. Just take a look. But we're gonna keep going. For for the the Ahua, right? The large copper color megalithic builder shall drive away the ball and the mew. Keep them in mind. That's some weird words right here, right? the ball and the mule. Remember 815, right? Because see, remember, they are protecting a people. But when are they is important too, right? When are we, what are they protecting them from? They say they shall drive away the ball and the mule. And what great serpents? Hmm. Are these dinosaurs? Hmm? You would have you would have even seen a dinosaur even at the even the last of them. Let's just 
give it at the best. Um, the best we would have probably seen was 12,000 years ago during the Younger Dryas. Then they would have went extinct. But science tries to tell us these things went extinct millions of years ago. But we see right here, and we about to put this on the timeline, that the large copper colored nigga, savage, he wasn't no, he wasn't no play play. He was a warrior faithist. He believed in the great spirit, but he believed in beating your ass too if you got out of line. Excuse my friend. He wasn't, a, he wasn't adverse to hands and feet. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, he was spiritual. Yeah, he believed in the creator. Yeah, he did what he had to do. But don't complain because I got something for you. That's a warrior faith. This. Hmm? Sound like anybody you know? For the what? The Ahua shall drive away the Baal and the mule and the great serpents and all man slaying beasts. For I will make what? Mighty nations out of the seed of the Ahuans. Now, notice there are serpents, mules, right? And, and bows on earth and that the ahuans protect not only the ions but themselves also but what is a mule and a ball right remember that 815 respectfully a ball is a lion remember we talking about america and a mule is a tiger. Remember, we talking about America. Did you? So, so a waspy, right, is explaining to y'all that there was a lion in America at one point, right? Y'all see that, right? It said a ball and a mule, right? That. The large copper colored race was protecting the mound builder race from animals and stuff that could kill them. Right? But how many of y'all knew that America had a lion that was indigenous to it? And not only a lion that was indigenous to it, but a tiger that was indigenous to America. How many of y'all knew that? If you knew that, hit me with a three in the chat. But a wasp is telling us that there was lions in America. This was so long ago that there was lions in America. So we, we don't see lions in America today or tigers, not unless they in the zoo. So when was the last time there was a lion in America and when did they go extinct? This is going to show the great antiquity of the time we're talking about, right? So is it true that there was lions in America? Let's check it out. Uh-huh. Check out Big Dog. Get a look at it. Huh? This is Pantera Atrox. <coughs> Pantera Atrox is more commonly known as the American lion. Get a look at it. Right? The American lion. It is also called the North American lion or American cave lion. The scientific name Panthera atrox is a Latin phrase that trans translates as cruel or fearsome panther. It lived, listen, listen, y'all. It lived in North America.
from the Pleistocene epoch about 340,000 years ago, right? 340,000 years ago, before it went extinct 11,000 years ago. So 11,000 years ago is 9,000 BC. Hmm? They trying to put it at this crazy age and date. No, this is 9,000 BC. Huh? I can't protect you from uh, an American lion if no, if American lions don't exist anymore. You see? So this is pre-11,000 years ago. All right. Now take clear notice that the American lion goes extinct in, in the Americas during the Younger Dryas. Mm -hmm. And during the Quaternary Extinction event, circa 11,000 to 9,000 BC. But this is why a wasp is unmatched. All right. Remember. The Lord's second book correlates to the time of Su or Isaraka, right? That gives us, right? A lot of people don't know, but that gives us the ability to put the actions of these people, right? At the time that they were fighting these American lions, right? It gives us the ability to put the actions of these people on a timeline, right? Get a look, y'all. This is just part of the timetables of prophecy, right? But if you look over here in this corner, right, if you notice, it, it, the, we, well, look, we here right here in the 25th arc cycle, right? Right here. In 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 a three thousand year period, right called Cosma. Everybody see that? We are one hundred and seventy six years past eighteen forty eight. The beginning of Cosma started in eighteen forty eight, and it ended in forty eight forty eight. A three thousand year span of time called Cosma. We don't have a God today. Never wonder about God may never ask your Joe prayers because there is no God today. There is a goddess. Her name is Shea Seedy, Anthotis, right? She's a goddess. And look, we're in the present time. But remember, remember, the book led us to the time of Su, right? Or the book of the first lords during the Ark of Isaraka. So we go right back up here to the Ark of Isaraka, right, ran by the Orion chief Su, right? And we see that that starts about 21,400 years ago or during the 18th arc cycle. Remember, we, we down here in the 25th. So when we're talking about these Ahuans being in America, Protecting itself, uh, protecting the uh, mound builders against the uh, American tiger and American lion. We're talking about a time circa 19,553 BC to 16,353 BC, or from 19 to 16,000 BC. See, during the Ark of Isaraka, ran by Sue. That's the 18th arc cycle, 21,000 years ago. See, this is how you tell time. Notice, we broke it down both ways. Over here, we explained the Gregorian calendar and put it in the timeline so where it can be readily understood. So when we get in these stories, right, right here, all right, that the Ahua, the Ahuan shall drive away the tigers and the, and the lions 
and the great serpents and all man slaying beasts just understand that we're talking about a time 21,000 years ago or from 19,000 to 16,000 BC called the Ark of Isaraka, the 18th arc cycle after the creation of man or 54,000 years after the creation of man. As a matter of fact, this is right after the time of what? The Ark of Noah, Noah's Ark. What happened during Noah's Ark, the Ark of Noah? The flood of pine, the great pine, right? The great deluge. So Noah is not even a man. Noah is a time, right? So look, see, see how a waspy is able to put everything on a timeline. It's just on a higher level. We not. We not encompassed and bound in by the Gregorian, Justinian calendars, Hebrew calendars, Babylonian, anything, right? Even the biblical God tell you he created the sun and the stars for signs, and seasons, and months, and day. Well, he didn't go on to tell you how to do it. See, don't matter if you got all the math right. If you start in the wrong place, you're going to end in the wrong place. Right. Don't matter if all the math in the middle is correct. All right. So we're talking about a time from 19,000 to 16,000 B.C. Right. People never take into account the environment. Right. Now, this is this is this is I thought was was dope, though. Right. That even though a mandible. Right. Because people would say, well, you know, JBN, he was just he just knew that, you know what I mean, that uh, they had uh, lions out. Man, they, they found the first lion in 1830. Well, mind you, he was born in 1828. So he'd have been two years old. Right. But he could have known that Cosmon and he just. Well, guess what? Even though a mandible of American lion. Right was found in 1830 this animal was not even labeled a lion by science till 1971 right science didn't even know this was a lion till 1971 even though they found some bones from it right a waspy revealed that they existed in 1882 how sway how before anybody knew that they was there? Proven again, a wasp is the primary source, right? And for all the gum bumpers, oh, we don't believe, we don't believe in you. <laughs> we don't believe in archaeology. We don't believe you. You see how full of belief in self they are. No objective proof. They can't prove that dinosaur bones don't exist. Everything in science says they do. Right. So they just stuck in belief and, you know, uh, uh, subjectivity, emotional and stuck in their feelings. Right. They're full of self or what we know is shaitan. Right. But dig this. This is synopsis of 16 cycles. Now, remember, right. We was down here in the 18 cycle. So if you go 16 from this, we in cycle one. Right. From 1 to 16, they're going to give us a, a synopsis on the first 48,000 years after the creation of man, right? And this is just a, a, bit, a quick breakdown of what's going on, some of the things going on during them times. The creator said, in the early days, I raised up what? Ahuans. And I gave them certain commandments, among them which was, not to cohabitate with the drugs, lest they go down in darkness. What are you talking about darkness? Right? We're going to get into that. But these Ahuans, right? These copper colored people, they did not obey my words. And lo and behold, they were lost from the face of the earth or they went extinct. How? How did they go extinct? From retro breeding or bad Breeding caused their extinction. Mm, let that sink in. They they mix with a people that was beneath them mm, spiritually, and the offspring 
fell lower than the parent. That's called retro breeding. Okay? These cause genetic abnormalities and things, and people go extinct. Right? Now, because the ions, right, the mound builders, the people who get it, right, have become a spiritual people and have prospered in peace and spirit, behold, they have degenerated in the corporeal body. They yield abundant harvest for my Ethereum wells, but they are like untimely births. Now, I will bring the earth into the Ajayan fields for in forests for a long time. This is uh, uh, atmospheric density, Aja, semi-darkness, right? For a long season. For what? Remember, they went out on the earth. from They went extinct, right? This is in the first 48,000 years. They went extinct, right? In that same 48,000 years, right? Jaja take the earth through a atmospheric density and goes and produces the Ahuin again. So our forefathers had been on the, on the planet twice already in less than 50,000 years. They had been on and off the planet twice. Let it sink in. And it came to pass that many of the ions lost the, the uh, generative desire and so did not bring forth many heirs. But the brown people, the people who buried in the ground, right, burnt with the desires and they laid hold of the iron women and thus brought forth the Ahuan, right, the copper colored, the strong, the bright, and the quick, right? So the copper colored race, the Ahuan race is from day one ad mixed. And not only were they brought forth once on the earth, but multiple times, as we see here in this post flood narrative. But let's take a look at the lifestyle of the Ahuan in America, also commonly called Olmec, right? But we are revealing today, these are your megalithic builders more than 20,000 years ago, right here in America. Remember, Olmec is not the people. Olmec is a time where groups of people lived in certain areas, right? So... Let, let's take a look at the lifestyle of the Ahuans in America, the large copper color mega, me, megalithic builder, also commonly called the Olmec. Now, this is circa 7053 BC to 9 to 3953 BC, a, a 3100 year span of time called the Arc of Lu, right? The 22nd arc cycle, right? So, this is roughly. Uh, 12,000 years after the uh, order had been given to protect the ions, right? And look what it say. These are some of the copper works, representations of the copper works. Look what it say. Now we're talking about the lifestyle. And we're talking about in America. Watch this. Between the great kings and the great capitals, were a thousand canals crossing the country in every direction from east to west and from north to south so that the seas of the north were connected with the seas of the south, right? Uh, uh, one of the seas in the north up here in Michigan is Lake Superior, <clears throat> also called in ancient Algonquin, Hula Hula Pan, right? And and in, in, in the sea in the south is uh what we what we would call the Caribbean, right? The Caribbean Sea. And that is called Sociopan. So we got Hula Hula Pan, Lake Superior in the north, dumping its water through the Mississippi down into the Gulf area uh, of the Caribbean, 
which is called sociopan, right? And the people look, the people traveled in canoes and carried the products of the land to all directions. Besides the canals mentioned, there were seven other great canals named after the kings who built them. And they extended across the plains in many directions, but chiefly east and west. Look, this is this dumps all the way up in Lake Michigan, a Lake Superior. All right. Cairo right here. Shout to Mississippi. Now he say most of them flow east and west. All right. These are the only two, the Ohio and the Tennessee that flow back east. All right. A lot of people think they come from the Alleghenies up here and flow towards the, no, it actually comes from the Mississippi and is graded to the mountain. Cosmo, you just talking. All right. See, in those days, the kings and learned men set their hearts on building canals, the great river. Right here, Mississippi, the Mississippi is really called the Asioa. Right? What I'm telling y'all is this is hand carved. The large copper colored people carved this on purpose. They graded it all. Found the level. Everything. Watch. You just be talking, Cosmo. Mm -hmm. Let me source up some more. See, in those days, the kings and the learned men set their hearts on building canals and finding places and roadways for them. And the great glory and honor of man at that time lay in this achievement. In what? Building great canals. And finding what? Finding places and roadways for them. That was a great glory and honor of man at that time. What time are we in? We in between 7,000 and 4,000 BC. Right? This is what's dope about a waspy. And this is going on then. So, you know, the whole like dichotomy of the older a thing is, the ancients was dumb, right? The more you go back in the past, they were dumb. No, don't believe that. The mighty Mississippi was carved by hand by your ancestors. Watch this. Watch this. You did it for fun. Look, you, you got great glory and honor from it. This is what you did. You found roadways, right? You built great canals and waterways, right? And found roadways for them, right? And look, and 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 Gichi, and God, Gichi. Right? So you know we in America. Gichi. Perceiving the virtue and wisdom of men. Look, we just talking about in America. Perceiving the virtue and wisdom of men sent his angels to teach man the mystery of what canal making and what to teach him to compound clay with lime and sand to hold water do y'all know what this is hmm? compounded clay with lime and sand that's concrete and when you go and if you can, could stop the Mississippi for a minute, right? You will find that it's massive amounts of compacted concrete, yeah. compound clay with lime and sand just up under the sediment box, right? 
and has been there anciently, 9,000 years we see him. Jaja said, I'm going to send the angels to teach them the mystery of canal making and to teach them the compound clay with lime and sand to hold water and make concrete mm -hmm. to teach man to find the gal, right? This is your plumb bob. A gal is a plumb bob. Yeah, they tried to say we, we was uh, illiterate and didn't have no sciences, no technology. How? When we showing you we the megalithic builders. Huh? We had the gal or the plumb bob and the level, which is still the level today. The compass and the square, right? Mm -hmm. This would be the square, the level, right? He taught man to find the gal and the level and the force of water. And the angels also taught man to make what? Pots and kettles. To, to what? Burn the clay in suitable shapes. To find copper ore and silver ore. It's 9,000 BC. Se I mean, excuse me, 7,000 BC. 9,000 years ago. To find copper. This is before the copper era. And to find silver. This is before the Iron Age, before the Copper Age, before the Bronze Age. We already in America finding copper ore and silver ore and gold and lead, right? For the floors of the Oracle Chambers, right? Clean and shining white, suitable for angels, right? Where they was getting their lessons from. They turn it around, taking the copper, the silver, the ore, and decorating the oracle chambers, right? And look what else the angels taught, right? And when you say angel, these are just your ancestors. They're dead men. It's grandmama. So grandmama came back and taught man how to soften copper like dough. Hmm? How many times they didn't show us this? In, in your in your quote unquote Aboriginal studies, your Indian Indian studies, that we see all that good American copper work, right? And we got our own special kind. It has its own genetic DNA fingerprint. It's laced with a little tin, and we find it everywhere. But now that we know that they was digging it out the ground seven thousand BC, well, it makes sense. It makes sense that. The Phoenicians would have tried to came over here. It makes sense that the Egyptians would have tried to come over here. Hmm? Or we took it over there. But look, they taught man how to soften dough, how to harden copper. Listen, how to harden copper like flint rock for axes and maddox for building canals. A maddox is like a, um, a shovel. Right? So they making. Uh, uh, axes and shovels for building canals, right? This is what they do, right? They taught man how to work the ore. Look, 7,000 BC, not only how to work the ore and how to soften the copper like dough, right? But work the ore in the fire and smelt it. Now, the crazy part is, up here in Michigan, you dig what I'm talking about? We got a, a, a type of copper so pure, right? You can just pick it up off the ground and heat it up and then mold whatever you're going to do. You know what I mean? You don't have to uh, smelt it and bake out the impurities and different types of metals and rocks and blah, 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 right? But either way, right, when you found ground uh, uh, copper, you dig what I'm saying? And, and it must be smelted. Look, the ancestors is coming back, teaching them how to smelt, not only to melt copper, but to smelt it. That's a whole different process to take massive amounts of heat. This is a science. These people were not dumb. You know what I mean? And look, and how to make it in a lead sheet. 
like cloth. He taught man how to what? To till the soil and grow what? Wheat and corn. Right? If that ain't saying it's American, I don't know what is. Look, your ancestors came back and taught the women how to grind the wheat and the corn and to make bread. Taught the hunters how to stoop. My bad. One second, y'all. Taught the hunters how to slay the who? The lion, the bow. Now, uh, people saying, man, that don't make no sense, man. Why you call it a bow? Have you ever heard a lion roar? It goes, bow. See, this is the ancient panic language. See, in the ancient, in the first language man ever spoke, right? Remember in the story where, uh, where it says, uh, 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 Adam named all the animals. No, the animals named themselves. See, the panic language is whatever a thing, what sound it makes, what it does, what it alerts you to, what it is. That's what the name of the bird, is, or that's the name of what the animal is. So, for instance, how much you want to bet? That the very first dog was called a who? How much you want to bet that the very first cow was called a moo? How much you want to bet, just like this tiger, right? If you ever heard a tiger, it sounds like a cat. How much you want to bet that a cat, the original name for a cat was meow. But when you hear a lion, a tiger roar, it goes mew, mew. Check it out. Cosmo, don't make this shit up. I can't make it up this good. I can't teach lions how to make the their roar. It's not rawr, rawr, rawr. It's not, no, it's not that. It goes, boo. Go listen to it. it. And it sounds like ball, right? And the mew. And, and if you listen to the tiger, it tells you that it is the moo every time it roars. But what about the Mastodon, right? It showed the hunters how to kill the lion, the tiger, and the Mastodon, the great Hagawatha, the rooting animal of wisdom, right? Now, so now that we know the people, right, let's see what the great Ahuns, right, the great builder race left behind to prove their existence Today, right? Let's see what they left behind. Remember, what are they called? All right? The Ahuan, right? The great key to understanding who was who and who built what is sitting right in our faces. Let me read that again. The great key to understanding who was who and who built what is sitting right in front of our faces. And it is the name, listen, it is the name Ahua itself. And Owaspi gives us this clue when talking about the great builder race of America. He says, God said, permit my people to give names. Listen, Permit my people to give names to the places where I lead them. For these names shall be known in Cosmo, which is today. Right? Didn't I show you we was in the 25th era? 176 years into the Cosmo era or 2024? Right? For what? Why why are you telling the name the places? For these names, what you name the place. 
shall show today in 2024 the work of my hand done in that day. Remember, we're talking about 19,000 to 16,000 BC. Right? So he's saying, let the, that's going to be proof by the name. Right? And remember, we're talking about a megalithic builder, and his name is Ahua. Right? The race of men themselves were called Ahua. And remember, they are the megalithic builders. So, but let's precept that, right? With the Lord's third book, God said, right? Where are my chosen? Where is the greatest people of the Ions? Right? The mound builders. Where are the greatest people of the mound builders? Look what he said. He said, you have shown me the who? The Ahuans. The copper colored races. Look what he said. Their great cities and kingdoms. They're places of great learning. He said, man, you didn't show me my chosen. You ain't show me the greatest people, right? You ain't show me the most high raised people. You showed me the Ahuans. Hmm? Did you think you was the best of the best? Remember, these your fathers, these your mothers. The people, these are the, these are the mound builders. These are the megalithic builders. To get both, when you mix both, you get a Negro or an Indian. Okay. Now, these are the originals, the Indian or the Angui, the upright first of men, right? The Angui, Nikwo, Nikro, right? The Aboriginal, right? It's all these two old originals. Now extinct. Now extinct, but nonetheless, our forefathers, the mound builders and the pyramid or megalithic structure builders, right? He's saying, look, their great cities and kingdoms, you show me in their great places of learning. But look, he said, but the greatest of all, you have not shown. And look what man said back to God. He was like, I, I do not know, oh Lord. Tell me. He was like, because he told, he said, man, show me the greatest people. Who you think the greatest people? And he showed them all the niggas. Right? And Jaja gonna turn around and say, no, nah, them ain't them ain't the big niggas ain't the ones. Look at the little niggas. Them the ones. Watch. The Lord said. Man said, I, I don't know. Oh, Lord, tell me what, what they at. The Lord said, they are in among the Ahuans, right? In among the Ahuans, around the megalithic cities, right? Are the Ions, the mound builders, the little sacred people, the little cities, right? In the suburbs of the large cities, of the Ahuans, those are the greatest cities. So what you would call, so when we go to places like, you know, uh, let's just, you know, let's give a place, uh, 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 let's say Pumapunku, right? And you go up on, the reason we, only reason we gonna go up on Pumapunku, right? Is to go up on top of the highest part and look around on the outside of it for the biggest mile. Because that's where all the good stuff is. Look at God. This God telling you. Don't fight with God's mind. Well, you're going to fight with God either way. But this is God telling you that the little cities in the suburbs of the large cities of the islands, those are the greatest cities. Right? The mound builder stock. Your great grandma now. And what man inquired of God. How can that be? He said, man, how can it? How can the little people be greater than these big old people who got everything, man? They got all the 
they got they they large, they fast, they they do everything. They got big old buildings, and you you know they this is this gotta be these people of America gotta be these Negroes, these Ahwans gotta be the the the, the biggest best people, right? Parents say, how can that be? He said, look, the Ahwans, the copper colored megalithic builders of America are three to one compared to the mound builders. Hmm? So not only were you more powerful at one point, you outnumbered them three to one. So the man was like, man, how, how can they be this little people, these mound builders in these little cities be the real greatest people, right? He was like compared to the Ahuans. They they outnumber the Ahuans, the mound builders three to one. But the Lord says, look, these that build temples and hewn stones, the Ahuans, and cover them with polished copper, they're not my people. Uh-oh. These warrior kings, listen, that fortify their cities with soldiers, they're not my people. They are not great. All right? Now, with the revelation that the name of the megalithic builder is Ahua, we only need to look around the Americas for the places called Ahua. Now, being that vows anciently are unchangeable, keep that in mind, right? We can also look for what? Ahua or Ahua or Ahua or Ahua or in the G, right? With Spanish, sounds like H. It's no G, sounds like H, huh, right? Like the J, like Jorge. The G in George turns into a J, and even the J sounds like an H. So it's Hua. Yeah. Et cetera. Right? So when you see these names, know that we're talking about a people. Right? And to prove that we're talking about a people, there's going to be a megalithic structure everywhere you see the name Ahua. Right? Now, that may not sound familiar to you till y'all start breaking it down to you where you've seen this stuff before. Right? Now, objective proof of that it, that is truthful is that Every place, listen, every place we find Hua, right? Remember, Jaja told him to let him go ahead and name the places. So today, Cosmon, us here, everybody on the live, will be able to know this is a truth of a thing because ain't none of y'all knew what a Hua was. Ain't none of y'all know why the Keshwa language had all these who was in it? You didn't know. Let's be real. But the objective proof that this is truthful is that every place we find who we also find megalithic structures and with accompanying tales of giants creating these structures everywhere. What about, let me go, let's just get into some of these names. You may have heard of it, but you never looked at it like this. Huh? What about Sexe Wahuaman? Sexe Ahuaman. Y'all see it? Ahua. Y'all see it? And what do we find? Megalithic structures. Sexe Ahuaman. Or what about Tiahuanaco or Tiwanaco? 
see it. Hua. See it? Tiwanaka. See the megalithic structures? Huh? We unraveling who the mound builder is. I mean, who the megalithic builder is. And a waspy say copper color, brown, with long black coarse negroidal head. Well shaped. Right? That means he's athletic. Hmm? Copper color brown today. But in Tiwanaku, we see the remnants of the megalithic blocks. Hmm? But we finding out that these are cut by the ancient aboriginal stocks of America. The Ahuans, the large negroidal copper color people. Look, I got to keep reiterating that. They are the forefathers of the Negroes of America, also mis, uh, uh, also misnomered as Blacks, Coloreds, and African Americans, but are the Aboriginals, the sons of the originals. Hmm? Also known as Aboriginal, who are copper colored brown, with long black coarse head, generally tall. And symmetrical, hence athletic and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Symmetry creates beauty. Beauty creates harmony. Mm -hmm. What about Hua Raskan? Huh? Y'all ever even looked into this? What about Hua Raskan? Megalithic structures. In the middle of mountains. Even, even with a uh, massive size, this is a, 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 a work that is amazing. Even if the man was regularly eight, nine, ten feet tall. Right? And that's not a stretch. But anybody who thinks that's a stretch, when uh 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 uh, uh when the Spanish um Conquistadors finally came up through uh, Florida and the, into South Carolina. They they came back down through Alabama and ran into an Indian that they say was roughly seven five, seven foot five, named Black Panther. He was the son of Tuscaloosa. Interestingly, Black Panther, an American Indian, spoke Spanish already. Huh. He interact with them in Spanish, right? And these are the Spanish conquistadors coming up to uh, look at, uh, is this Pizarro? Is this Pizarro? The brother who went to uh, South Carolina, slipping my mind right now. And, uh, and he ended up uh, having the war in Mobile with uh, Tuscaloosa, right? But before that, they met a seven, but roughly what they describe as he would be about seven, seven foot five Indian, but they said Tuscaloosa was at least two feet taller than him. So that would make him nine to 10 feet tall. So it's not a stretch, but we see it everywhere. We find the Hua and creator said, let them name these places. So today, Cosmon can turn around and show the aboriginals their nationality, their heritage, their culture, and their ethnicity. Right? They talk a good game. Everybody else on the internet talk a good game, but they ain't showing you nothing that matter. Who cares about your genealogy? You already know they Indians, and we already got our genealogy. They ain't gave you a lick of nationality. Not a lick of culture. Not one drop of ethnicity yet. Hmm? But when you find out that the great Ahua, the great megalithic builder is you, uh-oh. Huh? This is culture. 
and it's yours. Huh? The sciences, technology, engineering, and math is our culture. We did this. This 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 would be like our religion. Huh? Now we know that ethnicity. Ahua. Hmm? What about what about Shavende Huanta? Shavende Huanta. Y'all see it? Hua. Now mind you, these are megaliths that are underground. Massive underground megaliths. Look at this stuff. Osman ain't making this up. Look at this. This underground. What about Quraz? And look at the ancient structures. Right? Look how it was all built up. Look, megalithic buildings. Ancient, melted. Look at the rock. The rock is melted. What melts rock? What melts diorite? What melts uh 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 uh, uh, uh. these these is hard stone granite, you know what I mean? Sevens, eights on the mold scale. What makes them melt together? Huh? You can only get that type of information in a wasp. What about Huaca el Toro. Huh? Did y'all know about Huaca el Toro? And the megalithic building structure. Now, remember, they told you, don't worry about the people with the great buildings. They not even really the greatest. They, you know, them, them my people, them warrior faces, they, but they not the greatest. Why? Because even with these massive structures like this, Underground structures like this, the great Ahuans can't build them without the irons. You can't build this without an engineer. You didn't always have the knowledge. Somebody had to give us that knowledge too. Huh? You, you went on to master it, but you didn't create it. We got to humble ourselves, bro. Remember, we got both. We the teacher and the student. But what about Huaca del Toro? Right? Everywhere we see that Hua, we're going to see megalithic structures. And then remember, he said, don't worry about the big stuff. Worry about the little stuff outside the city. You see the mound? Hmm? He said, outside the city, this is where all the good stuff is. Not over here with all this rock. Over here in this dirt. This is where the greatest people live because they lived underground. Do I got to? Is it a stretch? Is it a stretch when I tell you they lived underground? Look, it's already here. It's already built in America. And I think it's uh, roughly 300, 300 square miles of underground just like this. Yeah. So they didn't live on the mounds. The mounds are just entry ports. Right? This is how you get in the underground cities. This is how you get in Agartha. Mm-hmm. Juarez, Huaca, El Toro. Huh? Right. What about Huari? Look. What about the city of Huari? Great megalithic structures. I'm not making none of this up, y'all. Look. What about Huancaño? Or also misnomered as Olante Tambo. 
I mean, y'all, y'all probably didn't know the name Juan Cano. That's what your ancient forefathers, your copper colored megalithic ancestor would have called it, Juan Cano. But in today's Quechua, it's called Olante Tambo. But look. Huh? And these are supposed to be your Incas. Your Inc the Incas say we didn't build none of this. Huh? Hmm? And notice, right, right here on the, this is why I say these are steps. Right. A lot of people like to say these are terraces and they grew food here. But look, ain't no way to walk, ain't nowhere to walk up on side of them. This would only work, right? With steps like this, if you was nine, eight, ten feet tall. Look at a regular man. So what are they? Ten feet? Mm. Interesting. But this is Huacanyo or Olantu Tambo. Olante Tambo, excuse me. Look at this. Look. Or what about the temple of Hua Huatari? Huh? Y'all see the ancient megalithic doors? All the structures. Who want to bet this is a building? Huh? Cosmon sound crazy now. Why do you need a door into a mountain? Let it sink in. Let it sink in. Wait, 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 wait. Fight the cognitive dissonance. Why do you need a door to enter a mountain if you can't go inside it? This is a building, y'all. This is a building. But even greater question, look at all the markings, all the burning, all the melting. It's obviously been bashed. What could melt a mountain? Hmm? Do you have the answer? If you don't, you should get an OWASP. Right. I'll get into that later. I'm actually still writing my book on it and uh, I'm going to be breaking that down. But how do you melt a mountain? How do you create Petra? How do you create big great lion rock? Right. How do you bury a pyramid in a desert? How do you create a desert? It's the same thing you use to make uh, uh, to petrify a bone. Is escrow. This is how you melt a mountain. Escrow, hot, heated material, a football field deep, falling from hundred thousand miles in the, it, it, through the Van Allen Belt, through the Clark Belt, through the troposphere, through the atmosphere, burning up, hot, entering the earth, smashing into the, literally melting the mountain. And everything, everything would have lit on fire before it ever even touched it. Imagine molten lava, right? Which burns at about 2,000, 2,500 degrees, right? Twice as hot, 45, 5,000 degrees, falling a mile deep. Right? Hot, molten material. Mashing into the earth with massive amount of kinetic energy. And it does this for hundreds of years. Not just one day. Oh, man, we right back, man. That was, that was terrible what happened in, in, in 2022. No. What if it happened for the next 400 years? Places just disappear 
This is a natural occurrence on the earth, right? Luckily, don't worry about it. We got faith this here today, and we tracking all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, why do we need a, a door to a mountain? Nobody, I ain't figured it out yet. I think this is where your gin sits. If anybody's up on a waspy, this is where a gin sits. A gin is an oracle, right? Uh, if you go down into the Sudan, they have little small um, pyramids in the Sudan. A man sat in there called a jinn or an oracle, right? And the angel spoke through the man to teach the person who went into this place, to this little oracle box. Yeah? But this is the temple of Huyatara, right? What about this? Can't forget about big dog. What about, what's the people name? The people are named Ahua. The great race of megalithic copper colored builders are called Ahua. So it's perfect that they built T-O-T Ahua Khan. Take a look. Hmm? Wonder why now now y'all understand why you feel the energetic movement when you go to these places. Now, mind you, it's weak now. It's like a piano that's out of tune. It can, it does play, but it's out of tune. It doesn't, it doesn't play properly anymore. Right? And that's for all pyramids. And once again. The great Tiwanaku. Huh? T, remember, the A and the I can be interchangeable. Tiwanaku, Tihuanaku. Again, megalithic cities, megalithic structures, refining the great Ahuans, the great copper colored race. Forefathers, forefathers of the aboriginals today. And, and mind you, I just showed a couple. And there are hundreds of more examples of Hua being connected to megalithic structures in America alone. Hundreds. Now, in hopes of not being too long-winded, I specifically stayed on those just of America, right? Well, I hope we learned a little something about the megalithic builders of America, the Ahuans, the large copper-colored racing. FYI, the so-called Olmec were also of the Ahuan race. Mm -hmm. Hey man, say man. Hope y'all got a little something up out of that, man. This is the great megalithic builders of America. Anybody want to come in? You know what I mean? I'll jump back in this chat. My bad, I couldn't see the. Uh, the chat, man. I'll try to, you know, any, any, um, any questions or anything. Let me see who off up in this thing. Who we got up in this thing, man? We got, we got Judah Vaughn up in this thing. He said he's reading God's book of being, man. Say, um, uh, on the one, all praise is glory and honor to the ever present gift of all life. Go peace to you, Prince Judah Vaughn. Who else we got up in here? Just me up in this thing. Peace, love, light, power. Hey, look, I dropped the, hold on, let me drop the link. Anybody want to come kick it with Cogmine real quick, man? Come chop it up, man. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. You know what I mean? And just get down to brass tacks, just proving the people, right? We can get into, we can get into other things later. You know what I mean? You know, if you got, uh, 
you got some questions, just come on in. Shout out my boy BC, man. Said Cosmon going in again. That's right. Got my big sis Belinda Brown in the house. Love, light to you, sister. My Ema has always been better than your Ema. Mahali, our naturals. Shout out to you, big sis. We got up in here. Got the Cali connecting this thing. You dig what I'm talking about? Got the Cali connecting this thing. Dreadful Cosma. Say peace, love, light, and balance to the gang. That's right. Got my baby. OTK up in this thing, open the knowledge. Shout out to you, OTK, man. Got to come through, share a little of that South Carolina, Carolina light on the folks. You dig what I'm talking about? Ray and Shay. Shalom. She say, Shalom, good people. For sure, for sure. Who we got up in here? One of the artists of Yah. Say, Shalom, Shalom to you, family. Who else we got up in here? Elijah Seven up in this thing. Love and light to you, brother. Who else we got up here? We got my dog, Abdiel. Good brother right here, man. Good brother right here. Say peace, love. Who I got up in this thing? Young Judah Vaughn up in this thing. Peace, Prince. Peace to the God. Salute, big brother. How you been, man? It's been a minute. Man, peace to the righteous gods, man. What's the word, man? Just giving a little of these couple shout outs. You dig what I'm saying? We got my boy Jaway up in here. You dig Hello. what I'm saying? Who else we got up in here? Fritz Foxwell. We got JJ7000 up in here. That's what's up. Uh, hey, hey, JJ, as soon as you stop running. <laughs> Brown liquor, no ice cold name. I like that right there. Who else we got up in here? Y'all get your ass home. Love and light and balance to you too, sister. Shout out my sister Yaffa, man. You say right. Uh, brown liquor, no ice. Say, what do you say? Man, why they? Uh, who else we got up in here? JBC, it's just me. Daddy. You dig what I'm talking about? We got up in here. Who else we got up in here? My dog Drake Cobb up in this thing. You dig what I'm talking about? Drake Cobb's up in this thing. Uh. Carbon Crown, shout out Carbon Crowns. You dig what I'm saying? Who else will be here? Sub Darf, shout out Sub Darf. Fritz Foxwell. Fritz. You know what I'm talking about? Shout out Angela. Yeah, you dig what I'm saying? Let me see. The Warrior Faith is. What he say? Just me said the Warrior Faith is would kill the wild bees and they would eat the quote unquote clean bees that the wild bees would eat or would eat. Creator knows his business. Indeed. I am Mana in the house, man. Thank everybody for coming through, man. Um, Who else we got up in here? Omar Abdul. Shout out, shout out. Who else we got up in here, man? I look about like everybody, man. Throwing that love and light out there to everybody, man. Uh, hey, that was a good one. That was a real hey, good looking. Good looking, bro, man. What's been up? What's what, what's been the word, bro? How that me? Man, your boy been slaving on the plantation, boy. <laughs> Every day, 10 hours straight. Boy, on the line. Putting on the line, man. So, shoot. Hey, I, hey, as soon as you come in there, that, that music cut on, that's the sound of the man. <laughs> Working on the chain. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> you already know. Hey, boy, you already know how it be. Yes, know, sir. Bro. But hey, it's all praise to the great spirit, man. I love the angel of work. You know, ain't nothing, ain't nothing but joy on the line. You know, when everybody working together and unified to one mission and one goal. So we get through the day nice and easy. Bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you finally got your new phone. Yeah, man, my phone was down for me. Yeah, my my, I didn't have no device to tap into. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I got my. Cosmo been on their head lately. I ain't I ain't turned down yet. Man, I know you ain't gonna never stop. It ain't gonna be nothing else but that. I think these last thirty-seven been heat rocks. You know what I mean? This, I'm on one thirty-seven. 
And mm-hmm. I like the last, like the last thirty-seven. I've been turned up every single time. Something different. Yeah, man, but you've been on the one every every single one because every time I see the link come through now, because I had like seven or eight videos come through, I said, "Dang, I gotta catch up." It's crazy your phone go down and you know in this in this Cosmonian generation, you trying to get all the information and balance yeah. out. So uh, yeah, it was good to to see all the light you've been sharing with the world, man, because it's needed and it's necessary right now. It yeah. been a wind it been a windstorm out here in South Carolina. It was going crazy up here. I ain't even gonna lie. Uh, like it was blowing the um, <laughs> the power lines around. Right? Oh wow! And yeah, it was um, making them jumble. Like you know, our power flickered in a couple times. Uh-huh. Yeah, like uh, like some double dutch lines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Creator had that vortex spinning them power lines in the double dutch. Right. You did. Right. I ain't gonna lie. I looked out there. Uh, we got a little um, you know, one of the little awnings. On the side mm-hmm. of that thing was rattling. <laughs> <laughs> that thing like, was a, like, hard, a, like a like a like a trunk in Oakland, huh? Oh man. How you like the lesson, bro? Hey man, I enjoyed it, man. It made me think about a couple of things. Um just you know, in my observable reality, studying the 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 people, the original mound builders and the Ihins, the Ahuans, you know, a lot of people was asking me questions about that too. So I got to, you know, study up on my own, but it's perfect timing every time creator put the right touch on it because I work with some cats right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my homeboys, he like six, five, six, six, and he ain't, he pure albino. Mm-hmm. And I'd be, I'd be wanting to tell him so bad, man, you know, your DNA is <laughs> angelic. <laughs> you know, your well, you, blood got like- mound builder. you got some of that mound builder in you, boy. <laughs> I'd be wanting to tell him so bad, but I'd be like, and creator, do it in the, in the right time, yeah, but all in, all in due time, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But yeah. then it's the same. By the same token, it's a little girl. Well, she a grown woman, but she only about literally, man. She's shorter than four eleven. I know she got to be, but she got a whole baby. She got babies and all. She just had a baby not too long ago. She, you know, she a grown woman, but she just hella small. So I'm like, damn, I, Jaja ain't playing when he say <laughs> he gonna keep a remnant of his people. In Cosmo, yeah. yeah, that's dope. All now, praises, my, man. my thing is, where the where the old irons at? Mm. Mm. I don't think I want to meet them personally. Uh, Why you say that? Uh, 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 I don't think I want to deal with a a, a nigga that sa- that goddamn savage, that damn <laughs> smart. And that right. damn big and fast all at the same time. Right. You know what I mean? Because he could just snap and go on a rampage and he going to get 30 people before we get him on. You know what I mean? Right. Before somebody <laughs> puts some AR shots on him and get him up out of there. I mean, because he's still a man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Boy, can you imagine a, 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 a three, four, five, six thousand niggas, 10 feet tall and, and proportionate Right, and Move quick, and fast. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. It's a wrap. That sounds yeah. like some anim- that sounds like some anime. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and then the, um, one, one, of the, one of the great things that they always talk about the giants is that they uh-huh. had these voices, these mm. crazy loud booming voices that like they could yell, and and it like literally stop you in your tracks. It's like mm-hmm. ear pit mm-hmm. screaming. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and uh. A lot of people say, oh, Cosmon, you pseudo. Well, then, remember, even in the Bible, right, when they went to uh, to um, to Egypt to find mm-hmm. Jacob, right, he, uh, uh, Jacob was, 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 was messing around with his brothers and pissed Judah off. Judah went out in Egypt and roared. Oh, word, word, word. You talking about in the yeah. book of Jasher? Yeah, roared. You dig what I'm talking about? Like a lion. And he said they heard it outside to speak to the... Word. It, it rumbled like niggas felt it. hmm What kind of roar was you doing, cuz? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of roar was you doing? Do because uh, lions yeah. can't even do that. Man. So, I mean, and then... And then once you once you once you learn about these giant Ahuin stocks... That makes sense. Uh-huh. Remember... Remember... I think it was Reuben and Judah, 
Remember they was attacking some people on the wall and mm -hmm. got shot with some arrows. Mm -hmm. And after he got shot with the arrows, after this after he got shot with the arrows, he got mad. He ran to the wall. Now we know them, oh, them ancient walls 20, 30 feet tall. Easy. Right. Right. This nigga ran <laughs> and jumped from the ground on top of the wall. Hmm. Read the story. I'm not making none of this up. I know. I know. I already read them. I read. I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, and, uh, they say this nigga. That, you know, them battlement walls. Even even the ones over there, the old ancient ones. Uh, that was uh built by uh. He almost died. All them. They was thirty. He almost. Old. He almost died that day. Gad. I think it was Gad. Was it? Gad? And uh, it was Gad. One of the. I think it was Gad that saved him. Gad and one of his other brothers. I think it was Dan and Gad saved that nigga. Yeah, because that nigga went up there by himself and started slaying niggas. <laughs> right, he lost. He lost his <laughs> and start giving niggas the business left and right. He lost his mind, boy. Yeah, lost his, lost his rabbit and went up there <laughs> and was butchering boys on the wall by mm -hmm. himself. Ooh by himself. What's up, that good and, and, and that's right, that's right. Just me, he said. Just me, said he also gave out a shriek that caused all the women of Egypt to miscarry. Damn, and, oh, nigga, what did, what? <laughs> that's crazy. It's yo, all yo, you what, talking, what, man. what kind of noise was you making? Cuz for real, real talk, what kind of noise was you making? That's louder than a jet, G force. Yeah, what, 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 what are you doing? What's going on here? <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Who else we got up in here? Michael Sykes, man. I see you, Simeon, the atheist killer. Ugh. Damn, boy, hit the link, atheist killer. Come on, let your cuz, boy. Hey, where you, hey, where you live, man? We, man, we need to go to squad. Come on, let the family. Shout out just me. Shout out uh, one of the artists of y'all, man. Y'all hit the link, man. Come on, chop it up with your cuz and them. You dig what I'm saying? I just wanted to bring a little light on the people stocks because you know, um, we get it misconfused, like mm -hmm. we the first people here. No, we descendants of the original people. This is why they call us ab original, you know, or mm -hmm. descent from or down from right the originals. You dig what I'm talking about? Nonetheless, nonetheless, we the Indians, ain't no doubt. But they uh, they don't understand, you know, that this ain't no trick. This ain't no evolution. We didn't turn from monkeys into mm -hmm. from fish to monkeys to lemurs to, to man. You know what I mean? It, it, it didn't happen like that. The reason you look like you look is because you got ancestors who look just like that too. Exactly. You know what I mean? I, I, I like, I, I, not to interrupt you, but I, I like how you brought out the fact that there was copper colored that they was athletic, that they was symmetrical. You know what I'm saying? Beauty. Because beauty. We're the most beautiful people in the world. That's objective. Objective. Ain't, no ain't, ain't nobody who has better symmetry and beauty in the world than the, than the quote unquote, the girl of America, the Aboriginal of America. We got the mm -hmm. best models. Man. Right? The proof of the symmetry, the proof of the symmetry is we the prettiest people, but we also the bet we the most athletic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we, we champion know. everything. Right, right. We everybody. If we get, if we got anything to do physically, it, it, it. Yeah, man. let's race. Yeah, <laughs> right. Do, let's do something. You did want to who saying for you? <laughs> we we like natural. We know you know we compete naturally. It it, it just yeah. comes with the territory. You know. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I was looking at some little kids this week, not too long ago. I was at my little nephew's track meet. He murdered that mug, by the way. Salute to my little nephew, Yes, right, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> put the hawkers, put them hawkers down, honey. What that boy was running, boy, like who he did. And it's, <laughs> but it, it's just crazy how how uh he didn't think he was gonna do good. And he he told he told everybody, he said, I don't know, I'm, I might, I don't think I'm gonna win. And creative yeah, voice, tell that boy, boy, you, you could do way more than what you think you can do. Mm -hmm. Tells it all. But but I was watching all of the youngsters coming up, and these these little boys, 
well, they ain't little boys. They they going through puberty. They are uh, seventh grade. Yeah, but they they running eleven fours. Right. That's right what now. I'm saying. They different, uh -huh. bro. They different. <laughs> just just look. I'm like eleven four, eleven five, eleven six. Dang. I don't didn't really you, start hitting 11 you, smooth wait, until... Wait, 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 ain't you 12? What you been chewing, what you been chewing on, man? What you been eating, man? Because, God, they moving. So it's like, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. They're they giants, too. They big now. Oh, yeah, they big, boy. They real and big. It, you know what I mean? They yeah. real big. Even the, even the little guys is big. You dig on mm -hmm. them? They big boys now. I ain't gonna leave front. Mm -hmm. Smart too. They know how to run. You could tell. Yeah. Oh yeah, he know. He know. He he gonna. His body is developing, and he yeah. and, you know they they know even the sisters, the young girls. They was out there. My little niece was out there toasting, but she didn't run her hardest. I was a little. I ain't gonna blast her on here, but <laughs> I told her. Yeah, look, um, you you gotta remember though. He he don't know he a dog yet. Mm -hmm. He don't know. He don't know. He don't even know he black yet. Mm. He don't know your nigga yet, right? He's still young. He don't know. He don't know. He got all this aqua in him, all this dog, Man. all this warrior faith that's in him. He ain't even. He, oh, don't yeah. even, he ain't tapped into it yet. Yeah, so you know that he... how good he gonna be when he know he good. Man, he already know about that vortex. I've been telling. Him, Man, you cooking with the vortex? I just be putting a little bit, you know, a little sauce in his ear every now and then. So when he get a little bit older, he gonna understand. Mm -hmm. Dang. You know, Jaja all around and everything. Moving me, getting me strong. Me. Hold it down one sec for me. Go ahead, keep oh, talking. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, you know, I'm just saying, you know, he gonna, he gonna know that creator's ever present. And that's gonna fuel him farther than he ever thought. Because right now, you know, a lot of the young kids, they don't they don't have a problem accepting creator. You know, it's it's not till a whole bunch of people start pumping fear into them and they start coming up with all kind of other stuff. But, <laughs> man, the angels is with the babies. I read that in the yeah. book of... uh. I think that was the book of uh, inspiration. Um, that Jaja say all the angels is with the babies, the high raised yeah. angels, and they yeah. the babies see them and they hear them. Yep. It's just not it's not until you get older, your environment start to dumb that down. Yep. Oh, it's just imagine that ain't real, but no, nah, they knew when they was babies. That's facts. So if, as long as we feed them that ether water, mm -hmm. you know it's gonna saturate. In their souls, and Jaja gonna make it do what it do as they grow. So we on the we on the right. They on the right road. I told him, boy, keep running, man. You don't don't stop running, boy. You are gonna be getting faster and faster and stronger and stronger yeah. every day of your life. Walking with Jaja, I'm telling you, he don't know he a pit bull yet. <laughs> you ain't never lie. You don't even know. You, it ain't till you figure out that you a pit bull that you a pit bull. You you like, oh, I, I, I'm a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to be biting on your. I'm back. supposed to lock down on your. <laughs> lock down on your hand. Oh, yeah, bite no down. Mm -hmm. no bite, bite. You dig oh, yeah, no you punching in the way you're supposed to. That's right. But yes, sir, man. I'm a salute to the guy. I'm a salute to you, big brun to the chat. I'm about to run inside, and it's getting chilly outside over here. All right, my guy, man, man, hold your head, man. Stay yes, blessed. Yes, sir. All praises. Salute. Love and light. Peace. Shout out the young prince Judo Vaughn. You dig what I'm saying, man? I just thought of um, I wanted to get into our nationality, our heritage, our culture, things that we was doing over here, man, and breaking down the uh, you know, there's so many things talked about these people, but they oh, they're just megalithic builders, they're this, they're that, you know what I mean? And there's no actual real proof or they don't even have a name for these people. So to understand that the, now that you know, when you see who I, right, you know exactly what you're looking at. And now start looking around. You're going to see megalithic structures, but get to the top of the megalithic structures and then look for the greatest mile on the outside of the cities. That's where the good stuff is. Hey. Um, what happened? Everything good? Everything good, y'all? All right. Well, you know, um, sub, like, share, man, support the channel. You dig what I'm talking about? Cash app information. 
on her before I leave just because she everybody else capitalize off of culture shit. Might as well pay the nigga that's actually caring and doing the work. Cosmon Cal one, man. If you feel so inclined to help, you dig what I'm talking about. You know, I just come with nothing but lessons, man. I go buy books. You know, and with that being said, I want everybody to breathe in. Let that light in. Cause I'm Cosmo and I'm out. And oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it up there. Yeah. When you in the sky breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it up there. Yeah. When you in the sky breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you breathing rarefied air. Just that job yeah. felt that child man, that papa bull, that tile man since the sun south in the arc away. My brain moving like tau saying so ass bug, it's so below that up bend, that down thing. This flow is atmosphere. I call that a ground game. See water is knowledge. So if I'm teaching, you learning. So how your God make a sun without vortexing and current? See the pattern is ponic. I'm reaching out for my people. Oh, watch me flow through your speakers. You feel the force of the ether. And when the force gets the equal, I'm taking off like an eagle. Police pop the pastor yesterday for pushing put equal. My DNA is Moshe. Mix that thing with higher water. My spirit rate is OTN. It's just a higher order. Got more light than Kavita. Rap a lot just like Tila. Went from Santa to Saint. Shout out my big homie Sila. Got more torque than a sports car. Got more work than a door saw. In the first million I make, I'm giving the doctor Ooh, my oh yeah. Yeah, put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you're feeling up there. Yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you're breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you feel it up there. Yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you're breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Super seven in my rights and ceremonies. I'm married to Jehovah, holy matrimony. Confucius say, in the words of Caillou, before you hit the tomb, be a bridegroom. I only got one question for Miss Susan B. On how to last, Ahu, and it's now a angui. Blame my inspiration, I'm just thinking thoughts. But in the way of God's, we gon' keep it short. Why Jesus wanna kill me? Matthew 10 34. Just a couple questions that I'm needing to know. Oh, watch me flow, it's so potent. Set the vortex in motion. Super 7, I'm floating across the Aegean Ocean. Know oh, you a Muslim now, so I guess you make it a lot. Well, I'm a Israelite, I'm a Mickey Met the Shiva. Uh, got Moses on the bumper, super slap off in my spaceship photosphere. So I stay lit, peace and light to the faith is so here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put that super seven in the air. Yeah. Tell me how you feel it when you're feeling up there. Yeah. When you in the sky, breathing rarefied air. Yeah. When you're breathing rarefied air, oh yeah. Oh, yeah.